Hey guys, welcome back to part three of the vlog. I'm going to be doing a little painting today, so we're inside for this. Um, and I'm going to be working on the raised board sections uh, that I built last time and also uh, painting up some of the industrial scatter pieces. So let's get some light. So I've got these scatter pieces made of like silos and pipes. I'm going to be talking about how I've done the painting on these and the ground texture here because it's super tough and looks really good at this sort of scale. Um, and going to be getting a little bit more uh, done on the uh, buildings as well, which I'll show you. Obviously, I won't paint them because I painted them before, um, but I do a bit of a recap. And, uh, and I think there's going to be one more vlog after this, uh, maybe two, uh, but uh, either way, let's get to it. Okay, so we're going to get on with painting the industrial pieces. Uh, these I have 3D printed um, from some files I found on Thingiverse and some pipe files that I bought um, on my mini factory. Um, I've got some paints here, so I've got a metallic. I'm going to go with Lead Belcher because it covers everything pretty well. Uh, Agrax Earthshade, the best shade ever. Um, I'm going to do some very contrasting um, rust effects with the uh, orange rust is a Forge World one, but any other brand will work. Um, and probably a little bit of streaking grime. So this is streaking grime. I recommend the Ammo Mig one, uh, not AK Interactives. And a little basing mix that I put in here. I tried to do a mix of tile grout and paint on here, um, but it didn't come out very well at all. So I've got a better blend um, that is a mix of uh, tile grout and super fine sand. So I'm getting black sands from Geek Gaming, but any really, really fine sand will work just as well. And I buy my tile grout now in these little bags um, that are intended for mosaic uh, making because the two kilo bag is flipping enormous and you'll never get through it all and it just gets in the way. Um, so unless you have a mega project planned, these little bags are a great place to start. Starting the metallic base coat here with the lead belcher going on with two thin coats to keep it nice and even. Okay, the classic two thin coats later and the metallic's gone over the gray primer really nicely. So now it's just time for an all over wash with Agrax Earth Shade to add a nice bit of contrast because the key with this uh, sort of scale is you need a lot more contrast and a lot less subtlety than you do on a normal miniature scale. Getting a nice all over coat with the Agrax, uh, making sure to get it in all the recesses. I tend to like to slide the brush at 90 degrees across the detail so that it flows off nicely into all the panel lines. Right, shade's dried, I've got some good contrast going on, especially on these pipework bits, but this is a little darker than I really wanted it to be, so I'm gonna go in with a bit of a dry brush. So the usual, pick up the paint, get a load of it off. I don't like to have the tissue come off too clean. Um, I still like to get a reasonable amount of paint transfer and then give it a dry brush all over, and I can already see that, yep, yeah, that's looking much better. It's picking up uh, the detail. And as you can see, it's all about the contrast uh, to make them stand out, especially at this scale. That looks much better, I think, than, than over here. So I'm going to give it the once over, including all the pipes, and see how it comes out. Right, nothing too fancy with the pigments. And I've just got some pigment in here that I use over and over again. And I just re-wet it uh, with some white spirit, just plain low odor white spirit does the trick. Um, I don't worry about binders for this particular job because this is all gonna get uh, varnished when it's done anyway. You can use acrylic uh, like matte mediums and things to bind these if you really want to, but uh, you kind of lose the effect. So, and I'm just putting it in um, reasonably thick in all the places where water's gonna catch. So we've got this ridge here uh, on top and I'm putting a bit in. I tend to like to push it into the corners and let it flow a little bit. You get kind of uh, a bit of a fade. I don't know if you can already see that it's kind of fading upwards a little bit and then more of it will settle in that recess and you'll get a nice transition of orange to bright orange. So I'll just go around and do this in places where water would gather and then uh, come back. Right, here's a good trick to point out where you've got some kind of uh, area like this where it's kind of flat um, and you want to get some pigment in the recesses. What I do is I do kind of like a thin wash over the surface like that and then I'll go back to whatever container I've got it in with this little flat palette at the moment and I'll kind of push a bunch of the thicker pigment residue into one corner, pick it up on the brush and then I'll stab that into the recesses and just kind of leave it sitting there in the wet uh, wash um, and it will dry in a way that is super concentrated in these recesses and you get a nice fade here with almost no effort so definitely worth doing. 
In the interest of speeding things up, I'm going to look at one that I did uh, the other day. Uh, I'll come onto the pipes in a minute, but you can see here it's got a nice concentration of rust in the recesses, and this is what I was talking about with the wash, where it's kind of orangey and you've got rust build up here, but you've got these super high concentrated bits where the water would, would get trapped. So overall it adds a nice kind of contrast at a distance. And now we're going to do some bronze pipes with the verdigris to really kind of set things off. Okay, time to break up this piece because it's a little bit too silver for my liking. So I'm going to do some brass uh, effect on the pipes and then uh, weather it with some verdigris. So I'm a massive fan of Gore Grunter Fur, the contrast paint for doing brass over a metal base. And you'll see why in a second. So you don't have to use a lot. because I'm not trying to shade this heavily because I've done that already. I'm just trying to tint it so um, you can see if I apply the thin layer of this, it already does a really good job of looking like brass. And once that's dry, and I've given it an all over coat, uh, it'll come out really good, and we can move on with uh, making it look nice and old and manky. All right, I'm gonna weather these up now with some Nilac Oxide, a, a turquoise wash paint would work just fine. Um, I'm gonna get a bit of water first, because I like to apply this in a particular way, and that is to thin down um, some of the paint until it's very, very thin. And then I would put this where it would uh, gather with water and things so I'll put some in this joint here and I put it on quite a big area like this like a wash and then this when it dries won't be a very strong color at all but this will help feather the edges and then I will just go and do a tap of the actual paint from the pot and then just pop that gently in the recesses so you get an intense color in the recesses and then a nice fade throughout and I'll just spot this around um, try not to do a pattern and try and randomize it and also put it in like joints and connections where uh, where it's most likely to gather but I thought it'd be a good bit of video because as things have dried and I put this paint and grout mix on top that I thought would work really well I didn't um, I'll sort that out in a minute um, you can see it's actually kind of warped this card Base. So what I've started to do is to get some PVA glue um, and spread it along the bottom and this is a meld terrain tutor trick where the PVA on top has dried and it's pulled back the card as it's contracted as it's dried so the way to counteract that is to spread a reasonably even layer of glue on the bottom of the piece and I'll coat it all the way across and then leave it upside down to dry and by the morning um, it will come out nice and flat. I did this on the previous test piece, and as you can see, it sits absolutely flat on the table, no problems at all, so it definitely works. So this will be sorted tomorrow. Okay, so it dried overnight, and now you can see it's nice and flat. It's got a nice shiny back too, but uh, it stays nice and smooth, and now we're gonna go ahead with the texturing on top of here. So in this pot, I have got a mixture of 50% uh, um, fine sand, in this case black sand from Geek Gaming Scenics, and a mixture of 50% tile grout uh, to give it a bit of strength. So I bought the dark grey stuff for mosaics. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this um, coat all over PVA glue, um, and then I will be sprinkling it on. So I'll just do a little bit to show you and just push it up to the building pieces without getting too much on there and do a nice even coat. And then we get the mixture and sprinkle it on. So I kind of just try and do it unevenly, build it up a little bit up against the uh, buildings. I've got a little gap there that I can kind of hide by putting a pile of this. Um, and uh, when I'm done with that, I give it a little spritz with this. This is isopropyl alcohol and water. And just giving that spritz on top helps the liquid soak in. Um, to wet the tile grout and it will let the glue soak up from the bottom um, so that the whole thing gets bonded in one layer. Right, after an overnight dry it will look something like this. This is my other piece that I'm working on and next up is to seal all of that down so it's nice and strong. So I've got here some matte medium uh, which I thinned down with water and a little pipette and then I've got a little dropper bottle with isopropyl alcohol mixed with water and all you need to do is to drop some of this on so that you can see it spread and just tilt it around so that it spreads across the surface and then we go in with drops of the matte medium and let it spread around and give it some time and it will even itself out and then once it does and dries overnight um, you can always encourage this around with a brush 
um, it will uh, seal everything in nicely and because I've used matte medium uh, you'll avoid any shine. You could use um, a little bit of PVA glue if you really wanted to. Uh, the only problem is that's what you've got. The only problem is it leaves a um, bit of a shine behind. So if you've got Mod Podge, Mod Podge works as well. But my favourite one for this given the, the scale and the not need for it to be quite so tough um, is the matte medium. If I was doing um, like a larger piece that I'm going to move large models across like I did with my um, Age of Sigmar table I would absolutely go with the Mod Podge because it's just that little bit tougher. And uh, yeah, leave that overnight and it will dry nice and smooth. Right, normally I'll wait for it to fully dry to the next stage, but I'm going to move on anyway. Um, and that is to use some PVA glue in some of the uh, nooks and crannies. And this little um, fine tip applicator one's really good with some grim dark uh, rubble from Geek Gaming Scenics or any form of like dark grey um, rubble works. I've sieved it um, for basing purposes. So in here I've got all the fine stuff. Um, and then here I've got the large rocks and what I'm going to do is just place one or two of the large rocks in some of the corners and some of the grit um, just to break up the texture because it's a little flat. I want these areas smooth so I can move like stands of miniatures in and out um, but I want to make sure that I kind of add a little bit of visual interest to the corners so it doesn't take much with uh, a scatter of this sort of scale just like a little bit of PVA in fact there's quite a lot of PVA there um, will let you put in a couple of bigger rocks and have them uh, hold quite nicely. And then just a little bit of this scatter and I use it just to fill in the gaps here and there. And if you've used a different one and then you find that actually it looks a little bit uh, stark up against what you've been working on with the other basing, you can just go back to your other basing mix which I just kept on hand here and just kind of gently sprinkle that right over the edges um, to kind of uh, blend the two together and then once again we're going to go in with the isopropyl and water mix to wet everything down and help the glue soak upwards like this and it really breaks the surface tension that isopropyl so that it soaks in nicely and then again we're going to come in with the matte medium or PVA glue or Mod Podge um, and bind everything down and then I'll let that set. It looks horrible now uh, but once it dries overnight everything will kind of meld together and it'll look pretty good. Okay, now we're moving on to painting the raised areas. So these are constructed in a previous video. And we're going to use a very similar technique to the tiles uh, in the last video. So I've got a dampened sponge here. And I've got my dark, uh, dark grey and Payne's grey mix. And I'm just going to use uh, the wet sponging technique again um, to make sure we get a nice uh, variety. I've got this little piece of sponge here. When I paint the bigger pieces, I'll probably use the kitchen sponge again for speed. Um, but I'm just going to do the same here where I'm sponging this on carefully. I'm getting good coverage. And then we'll move on with the other colours in other layers. And uh, we should get a nice finish as we saw before. Also, the cork tile itself um, has a nice texture to it, um, which kind of helps uh, add to that kind of concrete-y uh, look that we're going for. And now coming in with the standard grey or neutral grey in this case and you don't need a lot of this and again going with the wetted sponge technique to make sure I get a nice smooth uh, outcome here. Being a little bit more gentle this time to kind of make sure I get a nice variety of textures because then the sponge really works for you in creating that stone look uh, on top of the um, cork underneath which again has that kind of natural uh, texture to it so we're just going in with this very gently and doing some dabbing like this and rather than going overboard with it wet in one go I think I'll actually put this to the side and let it dry and uh, move on to another one and then come back and probably give it a second layer so that I don't end up smushing the paint and losing that kind of speckledy look that I'm getting now. Finally, I got a little splotch of this uh, cold grey to put on, and it's a bit bluer than your regular grey, which will go nicely with the the Payne's grey that I'd used before. So, doing this quite thin uh, with a nice clean sponge to get a nice variety again uh, in the greys, so it doesn't look too monotone. We're going to be very gentle with this one because there's no details on here, so to speak, to catch. So this really is to just kind of speckle on some variance in tone and because it's going on quite thin once it dries it won't look too stark it does when it first goes on and you think you've ruined it <laughs> but uh, give it a chance to dry um, 
and then see how it's looking like with any acrylic paint. It definitely will uh, fade back once it's started. So a bit shiny on camera here, but you can see already as it's drying, it's not quite as stark as it initially looked. Again, I'll let that dry and do a second coat. Right, and now I'm on to paint the sides. And I thought about doing like a military green, uh, but I thought, no, I want to kind of stick with those plain colors to match the 90s gaming style terrain that was from uh, Final Liberation. So I'm going to go with a metallic, I think. Using a gray metallic will be different, but also similar. Um, so it's somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to go with Lead Belcher, uh, always a trustworthy uh, paint. And nothing fancy here, just going to give it a nice, um, even coats on all of the side detailing here and where I've got these uh, 3D printed parts on the side and then along the front here and again two coats and I'll come back and give it a wash uh, probably with some null oil and then a dry brush and uh, we'll see how it looks. Okay and here we are at the current stage so I've done a few more buildings um, did the rust work on this uh, little hanger here as well um, it's the building I previously painted and you can see it sits on top of these little raised areas uh, really nicely So the metallics work with the kind of greyish scheme um, and the variance between uh, the three different um, Greys looks quite nice uh, Although these two are the same color palette because this has that cork texture um, It's come out a little differently which breaks everything up. So overall it's looking good quite muted Which is not too bad because I want to make sure that the units with their colors stand out on the table So you can see what they are. So next time I'll be coming back and tackling the uh, Roads as well as the final other scatter elements that are to go on the table. So uh, tune in for next time. Thanks <laughs>